Today we'll be covering ionic Lewis dot practice. So first compound we have here is lithium fluoride. And the first thing that I need to do is I need to figure out what the symbols are for these elements. So I have lithium, who's going to be Li, and I have fluoride, who is secretly fluorine, who's going to be F. So Li and F. Lithium was in column one. So I'll draw one valence electron for lithium. And fluorine was in column seven, so I had to draw seven valence electrons for fluorine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now it's clear from this picture that lithium has significantly less uh, valence electrons than fluorine does. So lithium is going to go ahead and donate that uh, electron to fluorine to fill fluorine's octet. And I will redraw what the compound will look like afterward. So I will have lithium with now a charge of positive one with no dots, and I will have fluorine with eight dots inside of brackets with a charge of negative one. My next compound that I have is uh, K2S. This tells me that I need two potassiums and one sulfur. So I'll go ahead and I'll write out two potassiums and one sulfur. Potassium is in column one, so each potassium needs one valence electron. And sulfur is in column six, which means that it needs six. So I will add those one valence electrons to each potassium, and then I will add six valence electrons to sulfur. We see after we draw the Lewis dot structures for potassium and for sulfur, that sulfur has two empty spaces inside of its octet. And so all I have to do is just go ahead and draw that donation from potassium to sulfur and then redraw it, uh, reflecting the new charges and the new locations for those electrons. Now remember that potassium can't touch potassium because it will have the same charge. So as I write these out, I'm going to rearrange them so that potassium does not touch it, uh, itself and instead is going to be touching sulfur. Each potassium lost one valence electron, so I will draw it with no dots and with a charge of positive one. And then sulfur is going to have eight dots because it stole two to add to it six. I will protect it with brackets, and then since it stole two, it will have a charge of negative two. My next compound is going to be magnesium nitride. Magnesium is going to be Mg. And nitride is nitrogen, and it is going to be N. I need to figure out how many magnesiums I need and how many nitrides I need. I can do this one of two ways. I'll show you both right now. So the first of which, if you are confident in your name to formula skills, we can actually figure out what the subscripts are going to be, and that can be our counts or I'll show you a second method after I'm done with the first. So this, second me or this first method is going to be to find the initial charges, find the subscripts, and then draw an appropriate amount. So magnesium is in column 2A, so that means it has two valence electrons, so it will donate those two valence electrons. So the magnesium ion would be Mg positive 2. Then we have nitrogen, who is in column 5A, which means it has five valence electrons. So it has five, it wants eight. So it is going to steal three. And then whenever I crisscross charges for subscripts, I see that I need three magnesiums and two nitrogens. Um, which would end up making me have to draw three magnesiums. So I'll go ahead and do that. Can't see that dot, so I'll redraw it. And uh, two nitrogen, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'll go ahead and I'll start uh, drawing those transfers. So we have uh, one magnesium is able to uh, completely give away its electrons to one nitrogen. 
one has to split between the two nitrogens. And then this last one is also going to be able to completely give away its uh, electrons to just one nitrogen. Whoop. Then I'll redraw this so that it's nice and pretty. I'll make sure that uh, the magnesiums don't touch each other. We have a couple of different orientations. I'll show you another one up here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do a straight line here since I don't have a whole lot of room. So I will have a magnesium, a nitrogen, a magnesium, a nitrogen, and a magnesium. This way magnesium doesn't touch each other and nitrogens don't touch each other. Magnesium will have no dots, but it will have a charge of positive two since it gave away two valence electrons. So I'll go ahead and I'll add those positive twos to all of my magnesiums. And nitrogen, because it stole three to add to its five, will now have eight valence electrons. And I will protect nitrogen within parentheses. Then I just need to go back and I need to add the charge to nitrogen. Nitrogen stole three, so each of these is going to have a charge of negative three. So this is one method. This is the method that you'll use if you are confident in your uh, name to formula writing. If you are not confident about your name to formula writing, what you can do is just start off with an equal number of magnesiums and nitrogens, and then just write as many as you end up needing to complete and make everybody happy. So here I have one magnesium, one nitrogen. So then I'll donate, but this isn't enough. Nitrogen has an extra space, so that means I need another magnesium. Okay, well that other magnesium will donate, but now I have a magnesium with an extra uh, electron, so that means I need another nitrogen. So then I'll draw one to donate. Oh, man, now nitrogen has uh, two spaces. I need yet another magnesium to help me go in and fill those spaces. Now, each nitrogen has eight, and each magnesium has lost one of its electrons. So this also got me to the same point where I had three magnesiums and two nitrogens. I told you I would show you a different orientation for this, which I will. So I'm going to orient it just uh, a tad bit differently. Uh, it ends up giving the same effect here. Just really any orientation that you would like to have all of your uh, elements in, your ions in is fine as long as the end result is that we have uh, all of our anions having eight valence electrons all of our cat ions having zero, and everybody has charges and brackets if they need them. So those are uh, two methods to get that done. You can pick whichever method you would like. Uh, doesn't really matter. They both end up getting you to the same place. Whichever you are more comfortable with is fine. The last example that we're gonna do is Li3N. So this one is already a formula, so I don't have to figure out how many of each I need. And instead, I'm just going to go ahead and write out three lithiums and one nitrogen. Now I had to figure out how many valence electrons to draw. So lithium is in column one, which means I have to add one valence electron to each lithium. And nitrogen is in column five, so I'll add five to uh, my one nitrogen. Then I'll go ahead and I'll draw that donation. And I'll redraw to make it pretty. So nitrogen is going to be in the middle here, and then I have to figure out some sort of orientation for lithium. Um, I'm going to go ahead and orient them like this. It doesn't particularly matter, just again, as long as lithium isn't touching uh, another lithium. Each lithium gave away one valence electron, so each lithium is going to have a charge of positive one. And nitrogen, having stolen three electrons, will have a total of eight brackets, and a charge of negative three, and that's it.